Attack, crunch, disrupt. Let's talk about Detroit. If you had 30 seconds, 45 seconds to pick Detroit, what would you say? Well, Detroit right now is Detroit 1914 almost. I mean, it is, it is an extremely exciting place. There is, there's all kinds of action downtown with hundreds of technology companies and startups and, and now venture capital that's come in. Uh, we, we've got you know, thousands and thousands of interns from all over the United States coming into downtown. Um, and you, and you've, you know, when you have a city that hit bottom as far as Detroit did, it really, it allows for opportunity. And that's why, you know, we've sort of come up with this brand opportunity Detroit. So, you know, ourselves, we, we have over 12,500 full-time people right downtown working sure. at Quicken Loans and the related companies. And there's, you know, General Motors is now at capacity. You know, the city, as you know, is, is coming out of bankruptcy soon. So it's, it's hard to imagine if you haven't been there. I always tell people, I'd rather not talk about it because whatever I say doesn't give it justice because the perception is always so much different than when you see what's going on on the ground there. That was a lot, a lot more than 30 seconds. Yes, please clap. <laughs> Very good. So what, what do you see as the single biggest advantage to Detroit or really, in, truly, the Midwest in general? Um, well, the people are way cooler. And, no, I'm just kidding. They're, they're, oh, they are, yeah. You know, um, no, in... in, in in all seriousness, the, the Midwest, you know, you, you hear that it's sort of a, a hokey thing here, the Midwest work ethic and all that, but you really do experience it. I mean, we're involved in companies all over, and there's always exceptions, of course, on both sides and all sides, but in general, the, this concept of the Midwest work ethic is, is true. I mean, people work very, very hard. Uh, again, as I said earlier, great universities. You have this, uh, this magnet attraction of, of smart people out of Harvard and Stanford and Yale and Brand. They're all coming. Not all, of course, but a lot of them are coming to Detroit. And you, know, you have a very motivated uh, uh, government and people that are working there because it hits, it hit bottom. You know, things sometimes, until you hit bottom, bottom, right. sometimes you don't know how resilient you can be. And it, it forces a lot of innovation, creativity. And that's what's happening right now there. So let's say you get a company to move there. How, how do you get them to stay? Well, we, we haven't had one leave so far, which is good. Now, now this, this sort of this tech you know, growth phase and, and moving from the, what we call the muscle economy, you know, into this brain economy. Sure. Uh, in Detroit terms, it's, it's only been a handful of years. So uh, most people, when they get there, are surprised and, and, and sort of fall in love with the story and the impact and what they can see immediately uh, by being there, by being this bigger fish in the smaller pond. Now, that won't be like that always, obviously. Uh, so we, we haven't had that, Matt, uh, issue of anybody leaving yet. And, and they want to stay because... You know, they become embedded in the city and, and more, again, I can't stress enough, more than the mission of their, not more than, but e equivalent with the mission of their business is this, this mission of Detroit. And, it, and it, you know, one hand works with the other pretty well. What, what's being done to remove the blight from the city? I view Detroit's challenges in four categories. There's blight, there's education, there's crime, and there's jobs. In my view, the other three can't get cured in the way they need to be cured until Blight is removed. I mean, blight is a cancer. It is something that grows. It is something that is, is just sucks the soul out of people and kids and neighborhoods. So, so we're very, very focused on the blight removal. So 80,000 homes. It, by yeah. doing this, though, are, are you kind of destroying the old character of Detroit? First thing you want to do, if a home can be saved and there's any, any kind of economics that, that make it rational to save it, you want to do that, but we're not talking about homes that have a prayer here, right? We're talking about they've been completely stripped, burned out. It, it's it's pretty much over. There's a carcass left, and so that is what has to be removed. Now we take many Detroit public school students through downtown, and you can see these pictures. There's a lot of excitement, and and the and the message is, you know, stay in school, do well. Look what's going on downtown now. You can get a job, technology, there's all sure. kinds of action, and they get on a high from that. Then they go back to their neighborhood wake up the next morning, and that probably lasts about 12 hours till they walk by three blighted homes. A lot of the crime takes place in the blighted homes. 60% of the fire calls in Detroit are to blighted homes. So we're going to serve on this mission. We have got to get rid of this. And, and, and people are rallying around this, the mayor, and, and we have the Land Bank active in the state, even the feds. I think we're going to get it done.